I don't know if you are brand new here today, Trade Like a Pro, or if you've been around for a while, but either way, I want to welcome you here to this video and to thank you for taking some time out of your uh, busy day and taking a little bit of time to learn about what goes on inside of the live trade room. And I really have to tell you that this is so much more than a live trade room. It really is a robust training on how to become an elite professional trader. Everything from the strategy to how to execute the trades to how to manage the trades, how to size your trades, and how do you manage your risk uh, on your account overall? What's the psychology of a professional trader? We really dive into all of it. And so it's so much more than here's some levels that are really useful and you just start clicking the button. So we're gonna dive into that today. My name's Ephraim, I'm the founder here at Day Trade Like a Pro. I run the live trade room. That's a real privilege that I get to have to be able to trade with some really, really great traders. and. Um, to be able to share a little bit about what I've learned through this nearly 20 year trading journey that I've been on. So we're going to dive into that, but I want to start right out of the gate. What we're looking at is the S&P 500. I'll uh, minimize this in a minute. We'll look over at the NASDAQ and we'll walk through, but I want to give you what happens from 9 a.m. Eastern time when we start the live trade room, what happens for the next 90 minutes, and then how do you take that and apply that in the rest of your day? If you're If you're going to stick around, you're going to keep trading beyond that then how do you take that and apply that beyond that point? So let's jump right into it, get right to it. And uh, so here's what we're looking at. This is just a really simple five minute chart of the S&P 500. And what we're gonna very first show you is you're not going to be, you're gonna become completely self-sufficient because you're going to know what each of, how to generate each of these levels for yourself and what they're for. Now that takes just a little bit of time for you to get really uh, competent at it, but we are gonna show you how to do that and we'll, we'll work through that. So very first things we're gonna show you, how do you get this purple line, this green line, and this yellow line? And by the time this uh, you're watching this, that may have already been automated at this point, but we still want you to understand how to do that. Now. This is just happens to be the way that today's look because if I go like this and I take my fib and I draw 50% between yellow and purple, we happen to get green. That's purely coincidental. So please don't jump to any conclusions and think, okay, all they're doing is drawing in these. This is just how today's chart happens to look. And it doesn't mean if we went back and looked at any other day that it would look at all like this. It's just how, and what I did is I didn't, cherry pick the very best day so this is today I'm recording this on March 4th and this is today's chart so that's what you're looking at so here's the overnight trading and then the open happened right here I'm on Pacific time so this the open is for me is at 630 so want to talk to you a little bit about first of all one of the things that we talk so you're gonna learn how to generate all these levels on your chart and then which ones are gonna be sort of what are the most important to the least important. And that's going to help you to understand, do you want to be a buyer? Do you want to be a seller? Is it a day where you can maybe play both sides of it? So we're going to, we're going to dive into that. We get really in depth. But for now, what you're going to know is you're going to need to know how to generate these three lines, the purple, the green, and the yellow. So we're going to go generate those three lines, put those on the chart, and then we're going to... Um, be figuring out from there there's some simple things that I've taught uh, already that that you might know some of but so one of those things is that we take our fib extension and we draw from purple to yellow and that gives us actually right here you can see down here it gives us the low of the day just a hundred percent extension of those prices uh, and that was the low up until I started recording this. The market had sold off a bit, and I'm not sure if it sold off a little bit more. But overall, what we were looking for was we came in here. This is a Monday. So on Friday, the market had moved into an all-time high, but it had not been high enough. And we know that it hadn't been high enough because we had a target, and it never hit the upper target that would have been. Oh, it was pretty much a dead giveaway on Friday that they wanted to make another push. Uh, for today or maybe even Sunday night, but it was pretty much a dead giveaway that we got within I think a point or five ticks of the target and didn't hit it. So really nice kind of 
uh, dead giveaway clue that they wanted to come back and, and make another attempt to push higher. So that being said, the market came down here and hit our, what we do is a lot of times the extension in this case from purple uh, to yellow in this case it could be green up here and yellow down here or yellow up here and so it just that's all dictated by the market but generally that's kind of our opening starting range so if the market's really strong then it's not going to break lower than that on a day like this so you can see that holds to the tick right here so very first thing is that we already knew we had a buy side bias because we knew that the it was likely that they wanted to make another push higher and go up and hit those upper targets that we had. So just before the open, how you can trade this is it's really simple. You can we have 30 5132. You can just put a limit order at 5132 half or 5132 quarter, just a tick or two in front of the level that we want to buy. And then your risk is really going to be like, if this is going to hold, and what you'll see if you look at these levels, if they hold, even right here we have 37, and it held at 36. So we really want it to hold within a point or so. It's not a really hard and fast number. Most of the time when I'm doing something, I'm using uh, like a two-point stop, but that's because I'll be managing my position aggressively and actively managing it. So I'm not just getting in and then closing my eyes and hoping it works out. So if I get in the position and it starts to move away and then comes back down to it, then, uh, you know, depending on how aggressive the entry was, then I might manage that a little bit more aggressively. So you just put a limit order in as a buy order and you buy there and a pretty likely place to target, very, very first place I would be targeting from 32. And this is just for today. Sometimes the target might be five points away. It might be 50 points away. So, but really the next place to target would be right here. And we talk about that inside of the training of why you would target here. So this is the first target here at 39.50. So if we're in at 32.50 and the target's 39.50, that's about seven points. And what you can do is, depending on what kind of size that you're trading, if you have, let's say, a five lot, oops, and you have five contracts on down here, or maybe it's three, you can do the math. What you can do is when it gets back up into here, you could just take three of these off and you can hold to for a move up higher especially if here like this morning if you thought maybe you bought the bottom and up higher the target would have really been at a minimum this would have been the target at 53 quarters so it would have been about an 18 point target so then you can take your other two off here or you could take one off so maybe you take one off right here and you still have one that you're holding and you're probably only holding for like right here so maybe not worth it but up to you uh, and you can just move your stop to break even and just hold so you've got five contracts that you put on down here I'm talking a little bit about how, so how are we managing things take three of them off right here and then one target one here and target one there now the next trade would be you can if you've bought here and you covered up here already then you could buy five more right here in front of 35 that's 35 half you could buy five more right here and anticipating that the market's gonna move higher we would then be looking to target up here at 42 so when the market comes up here a couple ticks in front of that you could take three of those off and you could move your stop to break even right here at 35 half. Now this comes up and it hits here at purple and it pulls back to 37 so at 37 half you can buy five more and if you're doing the math right now you're holding four contracts from lower you just got five more that you bought right here 
why don't we just take three of those off right here. We can uh, move our stop to break even. We can buy five more right here. So we're holding six contracts, two from here, two from here, two from here, and we're holding, we're looking for another big move up. Now, you can move to break even. What I did is this is actually the trade that I took this morning is I, I bought again right here because you see how this kind of probed through here by a point. Well, this came back here and held uh, really cleanly. So at 37, so we could buy two, we could buy five more right here. Or maybe if you're already holding your two from right here, you just add three more. And then looking for a move up here, minimum 47, that would really be, so if this trade's going to work, it should move up here to the next level up here at 47. So you can take three off right there. So that means these ones stopped out, let's say, so you're holding two, four, six contracts still. And then as this comes up here, I was looking for a pullback to the green line, so I ended up buying right here at 40. It, it did probe down to this lower level to the tick, which that's okay. I didn't get stopped out or anything. I was totally okay. Maybe I could have gotten another point or something, but that's not that's not really the point. So then I can buy I buy five more and I can hold those. And uh, my drawing with that isn't great, but you can get the idea here that then it explodes up out of here. And so I was talking about having some of these that you're holding on to here. But the reality is, is that if you've got two, four, six, eight contracts, then that would mean that when it came up here to 50 half, that would mean you're taking, you're going to, you're going to take, you're just peeling these off and taking profit as it, this is, this is how a professional would trade this. You're peeling these off and taking profit as it's coming up here. Okay. So you take four right here at this level, take four at that level, and you just have a limit order sitting there. And then that's it, you know. And then if you want to try and buy more, today ended up selling off a bit more. Let's see how, yeah, so today sold off a bit more. Still the lower the day held. But this is why we're taking profit as the market's coming up here. <clears throat> and eventually we should get another reload and the market will move up. We have targets up here and they shouldn't really be done with higher. But um that is a little bit of a behind the scenes of how a morning would go. That's that will get you till about uh, eleven or until about three o'clock Eastern time. That's what there would have been to do here this morning, and you could go through and do the math on that. There's you know from here to there that seven points, and so I don't know. This is probably a, a 50, 40, 50, 60 point day, something like that, on just a day like that. So. And then if you start doing a lot of size, so now add a one in front of that and you're doing 15 or you work your way up and now you're trading 50 contracts or maybe you're trading a bunch of different prop accounts and you're trading 10 different prop accounts with five contracts each. That's a 50 lot trade. So you're, you're just peeling those off as you're getting up here to the target. So that's how we're, that's how we're trading those. And you get to watch in the live trade room, you get to see I'm doing this in real time as I'm, um, talking through my entry and when I'm going to move to break even and when I'm going to take profit and where my next target is and why that's my next target. And you can learn all of that and start to do all that for yourself. So I want to show you over here what we had was we have NASDAQ looks very different than the ES did. And I really just want to show you. So this came usually on NASDAQ, I'll do like a couple points, but you see what happened here is that when the ES made this big rip up here and then see this second push right here. NASDAQ never made that other push. It actually held our purple line. And our purple line is at 45.75. And um, it actually, the high was 46. So it held the purple line here within one tick. And pretty good sign that this was, it had come down to green, it moved off of green, came down to green again, a little lower, not anything crazy, but a little lower through green, and then moved up to purple, and just couldn't get back up above here. So, then we got a bunch more selling, and there's more room on NASDAQ. NASDAQ was definitely weaker today, so there's more room for this to come down a bit lower. 
they can load it up again they can try to move through there but I'm not going to go through and show you I mean but you can see there's plenty of trades uh, that you could do uh, on NASDAQ this trade usually I'll go a couple points in front of a level so the level was 78 half the low right here is 80 quarters so you would have gotten filled on this by one tick and then your next your target would be just right up here so this isn't a monster trade but it's from 80 up to uh, 310 so about 30 points that's your first target and then it came down this is kind of funny because it never would have actually hit your if you move to break even you never would have gotten stopped out of break even and then you get this move up here to green and you know it's just not really going a whole lot of anywhere but there's plenty of places if you wanted to today on nasdaq was definitely the kind of day you could have shorted and you can see how it's using all these different levels along the way a couple good shorts off of green after the probe up above there even the probe we usually say you probably want to give it about 10 points on the nasdaq even this wouldn't have stopped you out on the probe and then maybe you got out at break even when it came back but then you could still get it again right here. You could get it again right here. You get it again right here. All these, you know, so the market, the NASDAQ was definitely more weak. But then here you go, finally, that big pop up. It holds purple. It comes back. It holds purple again. This is all stuff that you learn to anticipate and that we talk about and that we share through the training and the trading together. So if you're interested in being a part of the live trade room, again, it's so much more than a live trade room. It will, uh, our commitment is, and my personal commitment in running the room is it's the last thing that you ever need to do to become a successful, profitable trader. So that's what I'm, I'm here to build and make the live trade room. So would love to have you there if it feels like it's a fit for you and it's calling to you. There's a few different options of how you can be a part of it. If you want to discuss any of those with us, feel free to uh, just send us an email, support at daytradelikeapro.com, and happy to talk with you about how we can uh, get you into not only the live trade room, but the, really the elite, trade, uh, the elite training that we're doing with that. So um, there you have it. It's a little bit of a behind the scenes kind of look at like what's going on in the live trade room. How are we, you're going to learn how to generate all these levels for yourselves. How's the market using them and then be able to forecast and predict a lot of times to the tick or within a few ticks where the market's going to go. And then what are all the levels that it's going to use uh, in between there along the way to get there. So, and then be able to have some confidence in that and be able to put on trades and trust that the market's going to follow through to where uh, you think it's going to follow through to. So the other thing that um, I'll just mention really quick is that a trade like this, so see how it breaks this level on the uh, S&P right here. Let's blow this chart up. So you see how it broke this level. So NASDAQ fails, S&P starts selling off with it. It comes back to 52. There's plenty of room back to purple to come back and test purple. And um, so that's like a 10 pointer. So maybe you sized, maybe if you're trading five uh, contracts going long, maybe you, and you've taken all your profit, maybe you size down and you just trade three contracts and you try going short just for like a 10 point scalp down to here. So that's a little bit more advanced, but those are also things that we talk about. And, uh, and then, you know, you could obviously buy that 42 and it bounces uh, seven points off of that level so not like that turns into a loser or something you could definitely make some money back up to here and so there's a six pointer going the other way so get 10 points on the way down six points on the way back up I'm not saying you're gonna do that on every single trade but um, you can see today is not it's not like I picked the most favorable day that I could find this is just a normal day if anything this day doesn't look as good as a lot of the days usually look so um, so there you have it. That's a little bit of a sneak peek behind the scenes. Hopefully that is helpful and would love to have you in the live trade room and hopefully we will see you there.